Hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel as well as Gran Turismo 7. Now this is going to be my final update 1.26 car money grinding build. Now essentially what I mean by that is this will be the last build based around one of the cars that came with update 1.26. I've covered them all so far apart from this one here. This is the Nissan Silvia K's Aero S14 and it's probably one of my go-to methods currently the main reason for that is it's very similar to the Zenki and that's kind of what I base this off so it has a ton of grip and decent speed as you can see the livery you're going to want for this one here is by Notoro uh, dash JP and um, this will give you all the parts you need however I will go through the kind of specific parts that I'm actually running so you can match it if you don't really want to run this livery um, but it is the easier way to do it as you can see we do have the wide body installed on this car um, you will need it to be able to run this livery as well um, I believe it's around about either 25 to 50 K just for the wide body which look it's not too bad you're gonna make your money back on this build pretty easy the car has left the dealer and um, the used car dealer for now it will be back at some point in terms of the wheels as you can see we're using these ones here this is the one the livery gives you it's the racing revolution nt03 rrs and we're going to have them set to i believe it's 18 or 19 inch and uh, just the main things you kind of want to ensure actually with this is that you've got the rim width and the offset set to wide essentially and um, this will just give you um, a bit better grip overall but let's head on to the custom aero parts that this build actually gives you so we're going to go over here to where it says custom parts and at the front we're running type b so it's going to be the final option and then at the side we're running type a and then if we're going to go out of here and go to the rear we're going to run standard believe it or not and um, this is because the wing is actually going to provide enough downforce to essentially allow us to get our build pretty much perfect um, in terms of how we want this car set up for Le Mans so as you can see the specific kind of you know length and, and end plates are on there so in terms of this actual build we're actually going to run medium tires this is very handy because it does allow your lap times to be a lot better you have a lot more grip over the car and now essentially my suspension and um, differential settings are pretty much identical to what I had on the Zenki version and um, so we've got 95 100 4 4 35 35 45 45 natural frequencies 1.90 at the front 2.10 at the rear and then negative camera angle is 0.5 front 1.5 at the rear and then we'll go into the toe angle last off for the suspension and that's zero and then 0 0.15 inwards then on the differential side we have the fully customizable diff set to 15 40 and 20. Fully customizable racing transmission installed. This allows for faster gear changes. I've left it pretty much standard, I believe, which is 280. Uh, no kind of messing around with individual gears. We have the fully customizable ECU. There's no ballast or power restriction going on here. Um, downforce we have to the max at the front, which is 100, and the max at the rear, which is 400. This should allow it to be very, very planted and very maneuverable through the corners. We've got the high RPM turbocharger, anti-lag system, which is set to strong. And then in terms of our individual parts, we've got the inter cooler which is racing the air cleaner which is racing the silencer which is racing um exhaust manifold racing uh brake disc it's racing slotted it doesn't matter which one you pick um racing brake pads um brake control is installed so you can kind of do this on the fly and mess around with your front and rear balance um, and then if we go up here we've got the racing clutch and flywheel and pretty much all the permanent mods like bore up um stroke up uh, engine balance tuning, polished ports, uh, high lift camshaft as you can see as well, racing crankshaft, uh, all the weight reductions, stage 1, 2 and 3 and the increase in body rigidity for those higher top speeds. Now that is going to be it, feel free to pause at any moment, again it's very similar to my Zenki one um, because they are essentially really the same car, just a facelift and uh, an early model. So in terms of the event we're going to be using, it's exactly the same place that we use the Zenki at. We're going to go into Europe and we're going to go up here to the 24 Hours of Le Mans, uh, which is on the left side in France. Just click on that and it's the middle event here, which is the World Touring Car 700. Go ahead and enter that and then I will teach you the strategy that I've used for, well, this car. 
Now, I find the best way to run it is actually put it in fuel mix six and essentially leave it there. You can get three laps of fuel, uh, sorry, three laps of racing out of a single tank of fuel in this car. It may require you to do a bit of lifting and, and coasting, uh, but that's not going to be too bad. You're not really going to have to worry about the AI at all. You are much quicker than them in a straight. You've got just as much if not more grip through the corners for some reason these sylvias are very very good at le mans there's still people that you know even a couple of months later still use the zenki version and that's kind of where i wanted to keep the uh, more you know the aero version at is you know keep a lot of downforce make it very maneuverable as well as having you know decent top speed it's not the most overpowered straight line monster it's not like the m2 that we ran um, a few days ago it's not going to be hitting those speeds overall though i'd say this is probably the most comfortable one to use of the bunch whilst you know ones like the m2 that i've done are very very quick in a straight line they're a bit stiffer through the corners they might not be to everyone's liking the sierra cosworth again it's an older machine it doesn't manage to push out as much power as you realistically wish it would and um, whereas this is a nice middle ground between speed and you know absolute downforce through those faster corners you know you can really hit them at some ridiculous speed you're going to see me make a few mistakes um but yeah um <laughs> honestly overall really really easy to drive and that's kind of what i wanted to do with this one keep it like the zenki very easy to drive very aerodynamic allowing you to really push through those higher speed corners and um, you can pretty much hit them no problem in terms of its fuel like i said it's three laps per tank which is much better than something like the m2 where you have to pit every two laps um, it will require you to do a bit of lifting and coasting, which isn't too bad when you're kind of cruising around in the lead. You will probably do it naturally and actually save yourself that extra lap of fuel um, in the process. You don't have to overly save. It's just a case of, you know, if you're approaching a corner, just lift off and let the car kind of, you know, then kind of slow the car down. It's really quite natural to get used to. As you can see quite early on, uh, still on lap one, we're going to take the lead here. Um, as you can see, a few little kind of mistakes and runoffs really did kind of hamper my overall run to be honest um early on anyway in terms of taking the ai on but we're basically going to get past them no problem at all we're much much quicker than them the main thing we're just wishing for here at le mans is rain uh, once the rain comes you are pretty much guaranteed your win because the ai will get caught out it's a long lap and uh, yeah if they do kind of get caught in the middle of the track and um, when it starts absolutely you know raining down then you're in a good position to essentially dive into the pits and you know take the win now i do recommend once you get onto lap two is just monitor the weather as you can see here we've got a clear radar but it wouldn't stay like that for very long in all honesty you're pretty much guaranteed rain the majority of the time at le mans and as you can see when we ran about just over halfway through our second lap this is when the rain started to head towards us and usually at le mans it's a very slow moving lot you know big lot of rain and then quite possibly soon after you'll get some more rain once that one finishes so we're going to take an early call here before the rain really starts coming down and we're actually going to jump onto intermediate tires so i'm doing this as an early call as you can see at first i'm thinking yeah i'm not going to stay out on the drives it's probably going to rain for quite a while so i'm just going to go onto the inters now with the rain at le mans it seems to change up nearly every update I'm noticing recently the rain seems a lot more slow moving. It seems to hang around longer. Whereas before you could quite comfortably sit on the inters, uh, quite often now you will get kind of full wet rain. So just ensure you've got both sets of tires before you jump into this with just dry tires. I know most of us have probably ran them on and know what to expect. But there's a lot of new players coming into the game, you know, every week um, that kind of don't know really how to grind money and stuff. So just be aware that you will need some rain tires for any of the cars that you run at Le Mans, just on the chance that you get rain, which, you know, nine times out of ten, you probably will get rain. So we did dive in a bit earlier now. Now we're going to essentially go from a two sprint, uh, two lap sprint to a three lap sprint. So this is where you're going to do a bit of lifting and coasting. If it's raining, you'll find yourself going a bit slower anyway and not as aggressive um, on your fuel use anyway. So naturally that should happen. And um, we did manage to get the lead back very early on. And that's because the weather was just absolutely terrible. As you can see, the AI just stuck out on drives going towards the barrier and can't stop himself. Even we ended up aquaplaning at certain times because the weather just wouldn't let off it was really kind of getting into full wet weather territory as you can see here even on the inters we're just managing to keep it under control but we are kind of you know sliding around eventually the rain did pass but it wouldn't pass for very long as you can see most of the other cars now getting onto those intermediates only a few cars managing to pit early on with me um, at the end of lap two the rain did come back and now it's essentially a good job that we're managing to essentially 
you know, just hang around on the inters for another lap longer. I'm going to pit at the end of lap six, uh, sorry, lap five. Um, at this point, we're essentially going to jump in the pits and uh, get us, just keep ourselves on the inters, really. I don't know why I bothered putting a new set on. They were absolutely not wearing at all. Um, but I did put a new fresh set on, filled the car to full. And then hopefully, if the rain kind of passes enough, I'm going to boost the engine up to max power output and essentially just do a one lap sprint all the way to the finish where hopefully we can do a stop and wait, which most times you actually can if it rains early on and continues to rain for the majority of the race. So as you're going to see here, the rain's managed to pass. We're still on the inters, which is the correct tyre to be on. We're going to turn the engine up and essentially just sprint towards the finish line here and uh, essentially just park up at the finish line, let the timer count down and cross as early as we can just after the 30 minute mark. That's because you are time limited. If you can do a stop and wait and then just save yourself going around a whole lap, I fully recommend doing it. As you can see, we're just look, wait, you're trying to line it up with the last grid slot here and uh, we're essentially just going to let the timer run out. Eventually, the timer would run out and we're essentially just going to you know, kick it into gear and go across the line with a nice massive gap over the AI. Just ensure that you do have enough of a gap. You should realistically do, I do recommend doing uh, Le Mans on easy, mainly so you save yourself that extra lap because um, that can add three or four minutes onto your overall time as you can see here we did it in 30 minutes one second 0.859 we didn't get fastest lap because it obviously doesn't count our first lap and then after that it was essentially just raining constantly so we weren't able to hit kind of you know dry lap times at all throughout that race it was really kind of wet and just a bit of an annoying race but it did work in our favor massively it allowed us to basically take an early lead and uh, essentially just jump the ai by an absolute long shot as you can see it's eight 125k in 30 minutes nice simple you cannot lose your clean race bonus unlike tokyo which has been changed up and uh, yeah it's definitely kind of fell out of favor with most people at this point it's not worth running just for the fact that you can risk losing uh, quite a bit of time there so there we have it i've covered all the cars from update 1.26 they're all very usable to be honest if i had to say one was my favorite it'd probably be this one just for the fact it's a nice blend of kind of power and grip and that's kind of what you want from a car overall especially at le mans you want the power for the straights but you want the kind of aerodynamics and the grip so you can hit those fast corners as fast as you can really and maintain your speed bmw uh, m2 is probably my second favorite followed by the sierra coswell with. there's also the sardinia method with the um free 25th anniversary car which is very easy to do because well most of us got it for free and uh yeah obviously you don't have to put any real upgrades there you just kind of ballast it out so they're my un update 1.26 methods done and dusted i'll go and try and find some other good methods for you guys to use that's going to be it for today's video don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one take care guys peace